So probably the first step in part of professional development for the JMO is to ask whoever has prompted the referral, what would you like me to ask them or what is our clinical question? have a clear idea of why you're calling site to see the patient um, and what the symptoms are and you know have a general idea about who the patient is what's been going on probably have enough information to be able to do a basic MSE and a basic mental health history so they've got a long history of schizophrenia and they're hallucinating and they're not on antipsychotics and you want some advice I think that's really fair and you need to call psych but you should be able to tell psych you know those facts as well and whether there's any like acute risks and what when you need the consult do you need it immediately can it be tomorrow can it be in a week you know when are they being discharged what else is going on i lead just um just a brief like say this person's coming to ed with this sort of things and i've seen them um, and basically let's say it's Usually most of the consults that we get are for teenagers who've come in after an altercation at home, after something's happened at home, um, and they've either hurt themselves or they've threatened to hurt themselves, they're hurting others and stuff like that. So one of the things you do is, one, is what happened to, of course, that sort of thing. This is what we've done, um, or like she's, the person's got a laceration on their wrist, we've sutured it up, we've done all that, and what's the patient's current mental state? sort of thing, what's that, what's your worry about the patient, why are you referring me? With a, with a site consult, um, and as with any consult perhaps, uh, you do your introduction, g'day, my name uh, is Mary, I'm calling from um, Ward 4C, uh, always put, put it into context, I have a question about a patient's medication, or um, uh, I'd like to um, gain some advice about whether a patient should go home or not whether we need to schedule a patient. Put it right up the front so that you, you know exactly what the question is going to be before jumping into, I have a 69 year old lady here who um, lives alone. And then trying to, trying to figure out exactly, oh okay, so, so what is it that they are actually asking? Are you one, worried about that she's got ongoing suicidality, there's no plan to discharge, I don't know what to do, she's never known, she's not known to any of the services, I need you to come and link, up, link her up with services. So basically, um, it's like, I need a question to answer. Often what happens is, is either registrar or the consultant will say, we refer to psychiatry. This is the common dilemma that I say, refer to psychiatry, the JMO will call, JMO is not clear as to why they're calling. So probably the first step in part of professional development for the JMO is to ask whoever has prompted the referral, what would you like me to ask them? Or what is our clinical question? You can never go wrong if you've got a clinical question. You can say, look, I think this patient's quite manic. This is what they're doing. Um, can you come and see them? Or, I think this patient's really anxious. It's really quite tearful. They've come on with this host of sort of complaints. I can't find anything physically wrong with them. I have a feeling that this might be an issue. Do you think you could just come and give your opinion on whether this is something mental health related? But certainly, certainly putting out what it is that you're wanting advice on at the very top is is my biggest advice <laughs> you know so setting the scene and then going into that little bit of detail you know um, and always including things like medications or previous treatments and, and things like that most commonly one would be yes I'm worried about their suicidal risk or they're on a schedule can you come and see them I've scheduled them because I've scheduled them because of so and so in the general hospital setting for patients admitted um, Again, there will be a consultation liaison team either in the hospital for smaller hospitals and may very well be an outreach service. But there should always be a consultation liaison clinician available. Um, and I think every department will have their threshold for accepting referrals. You've got to gauge the severity of, of the sort of um, 
consult that you're calling for. And it, diff it, it differs, of course, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, working hours and non-working hours. Non-working hours usually would be more around acute issues that have come up, or like patients delirious, patients really suicidal, patients threatening to hurt herself, or um, has just been told a massive news and she's really kind of upset and she's really, really kind of um, acting out or hurting, her, trying to hurt herself or hurt others, is quite emotionally dysregulated. That's where you can come in and probably have a quick chat with her, give her some medications and stuff like that. Be reasonable about what you request. So you need to have a clear idea of why you're calling psychiatry. And like you wouldn't call ortho because someone has a sore arm. You would think about whether ortho needs to be involved. And it's the same for psych. You wouldn't call psych if someone's having a normal reaction to a life event. You know, but if, if you think they're having a really severe reaction or they need medication or they need review because you're worried something else is going on, that's really fair. We can't do counselling. We don't do counselling. I'm not saying that the person doesn't need mental health issues, but that's not the sort of service you can expect from an after-hours registrar. They're not qualified to do that. So if someone needs things like, oh, they've had this anxiety for a long time, they're really worried, they'll just like to speak to someone, you may be lucky if... If it's a really slow shift, yes, the registrar might come up and do it, um, but I think they're well within their rights to say, if there's nothing acute, please wait, or please go through the GP sort of a thing. Before getting a psych consult, I think um, the, the biggest thing to sort of rule out is the same things as ED. So if there's anything that's sort of reversible, medication-related, or circumstance-related, those things need to be flagged before you speak to a psychiatry registrar because otherwise the interpretation of how the patient presents tends to get a little bit tainted without that um, necessary information. So um, try to be thorough in the handover in terms of how much information you can give, but at the same time, just give the pertinent stuff. It's uh, very easy to get caught up in a lot of unnecessary detail when it's, um, it makes more sense just over a phone call to, to, to get across why you feel that this patient would benefit from some psych input. So are they acutely suicidal? Are they showing signs that they uh, may be decreasing in their mood or be at high risk if they were to be discharged straight from there without any sort of follow-up? Or is it that they have a mental health history and they would benefit from some ongoing input while they are in hospital and that may be all that they need. So giving that information about what things they had set in place before coming into hospital, um, what the current concerns are, be it their mental state currently, be it them voicing um, suicidal ideation or thoughts of self-harm or homicidal ideation, these are all really important things to get across to the registrar so that when they do come and review the patient, they have an idea of what's to be achieved by them seeing the patient. So, um, Another thing I would say is probably um, if you are thinking of getting a psychiatric consultation for a patient, um, have a chat with um, some of the more senior doctors to see if it is appropriate first because that way they would have dealt with these situations before and they may be able to advise you and give you an idea of where the threshold is for what's an appropriate referral and what isn't. Yeah. Similar to lots of other consults, um, you would assess the severity of it before calling the surgery registrar, before calling the medical registrar. Obviously, if someone's having really low saturations and stuff like that, you have a med call, you get the med reg done there and all that sort of stuff that happens. But if someone's got a um, abnormal, like, hep C positive, you're not going to call them in the middle of the night and say, oh, this patient's test has just come up as hep C positive, what do you want me to do? That's something that can wait a couple of days. So, again, the same thing, like, if, if you're worried about suicidal risk, I don't think, um, I think it's fair enough to call, and it's up to the psych to determine whether or not it's it's um, an urgent issue or not. And um, psychosis, delirium, that sort of thing, um, I think it's, it's fair enough to call for that. In terms of what to do before you, you call, definitely do an MSE um, and definitely do a medication review. What is the patient on at the moment? What are they, have they previously been taking? As far as you, you can um, discover, um, and medical comorbidities and allergies. Those kinds of things can be really important. If there's a family member there, a collateral history is also extremely useful. 
please don't call the psych group and say, there's a patient in the ED, can you come and see them? And you ask them any more questions, oh, I don't know. She's known to CAMS. That means nothing. <laughs> if you call a service and say, patient came in with this, these are the brief demographics, this is what we're treating them for, we have this question, we'd like you to see them, is there anything that I can do or any other information that I can get before you come that you need to make a decision? That's pretty, you'll be pretty safe doing that, I think, to any specialty. The situation as well, um, just a really odd example, there was a patient in ICU after a suicide attempt, um, had broken bones in all four limbs in ICU with the CPAP machine on and the nurse was like, can you please call the psych reg urgently because this patient is suicidal. I'm like, yes, but how is he going to do anything? <laughs> and yes, we know he's suicidal, but you've got to wait till they're medically more sorted out before you can do that. So we're not saying there's no mental health input needed. Um, probably not at that time, but definitely a bit later on. <laughs> But not to be scared of ringing the psych regs because I think they're pretty nice people, so go for it. Even if you have to call the on-call consultant, they're also incredibly, incredibly lovely and understanding, so um, to just call.